It's homeschool planner day. I am going to be sharing my homeschool planner with you guys today. Actually, it's kind of two homeschool planners and I will explain the difference, what I'm using with each of those to you, but I'm so excited. I think I found literally the best planner for how my brain works. So stay tuned for a homeschool planner flip through and kind of initial setup for the homeschool year. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you have been coming for a while, I always appreciate when you guys stop by and watch my videos and comment. I just love it. So like I said, I am going to be diving in to my planners this year. Now I have used a number of different planners over the years. I've used Purple Trail Planner, Plum Paper Planner. I used the Big Happy Planner and all of those had good aspects and I have really enjoyed them because planning really helps organize my brain. But I think this planner really fits my needs with the number of kids I have with kind of their needs for this year since they're all still pretty young. I don't really have any independent kids at this point. So I feel like this is a really good planner for that type of a season. So let me show it to you. I will explain to you all the reasons I love it. I'll explain kind of what both planners are about and kind of how I use those. So let me flip the camera around and just show you. Okay guys, this is what I was talking about. These are my planners. This is how I'm going to organize my school year and I am so excited. Both resources have specific purposes and I think it's gonna really serve me well. So let me get into it. I think I will start with showing you my kind of big planner where I'm organizing big yearly plans as well as keeping track of individual assignments for each child. So I chose this planner, A Simple Plan by Mardell because it has exactly what I need. And I've had a number of different planners in the past and they've worked well. I just think this kind of combines all the things I need because I have recently just put together a lot of portfolio stuff for my kids from last year and I really know what I want to keep and what I want to keep track of and what I want to keep long term. And so it, this planner has spaces for that and I'll show you as I go. So it's very well designed, it's very pretty. In the general info section, it really is kind of general info like your name, your child's names. But what is handy is some of these example pages. I don't know, I really like samples. I like to see how the author intended you to use some of these pages. And it was really helpful when I got into my planning section. So this was the part that I have been spending the most time on. And I think it's exactly what I needed. So within the planning section, it starts first with a big calendar spread. So it's the 2021-2022 school year. And this is great because I need to be able to account for all the days we need. We need 172 days at four hours a day here in Colorado. And so I was able to map that out. I was also able to map out when my big kids enrichment school starts. So they go once a week to a publicly funded school. It's an enrichment school for homeschoolers where they get to do Legos, messy art, PE. They get to do drama and give plays and music. It is an amazing program and they have classmates, they have teachers, they switch classes. It's fantastic. And so they are doing that on Fridays here in purple. And so there's just some days I need to make sure I know of when there, there's breaks and things like that. Then otherwise I have mapped out green are the weeks on and blue represents the weeks off because we do that Sabbath school schedule, which I've shared in a different video, which I'll link above. But it just really works for us to take kind of regular breaks. That is except for this first chunk. We're doing eight weeks at first and then I have two weeks off because that's our 10 year anniversary trip because we really haven't taken a vacation, my husband and I, since the twins were born and they're three and a half. So I mapped it all out. Whether this is exactly how it happens, I'm not too concerned. I just need to kind of have a general start date, general end date. And this is really what pushed me to get this planner in particular is the yearly planning on the student by student basis. So they have enough for six students and they have each a weekly schedule page and these individual subject pages up to six subjects per student. So let me start here first with the schedule. What I like about this is you can map out each child and I needed that because I have four kids that are all very close in age and they need me for a lot of stuff. It's not like I have one child who's fairly independent. I don't. So I need to do a lot of juggling. And so I need to know what everybody's doing at each part of the day. 
granted, I'm not going to be holding myself to this really tightly or having it stress me out. It's more of a place for me to start organizing my thoughts for a plan. Like for instance, here's my daughter, here's my son. So you can see here at like 7.45, I have him starting on his math live lessons, which are the online teaching for the Singapore math program we're using. And then he can work on his worksheets afterwards. At that same time, she's doing her chores. And then when he's done, he switches and does his chores and she starts her math on the computer. And that is set up in that time space because on Tuesday, Thursdays, that's when I need to drop off my twins for the twice a week preschool that they're doing these mornings. So we kind of have to have that done and I picked math because we could also put math on a clipboard and they could keep working on their math as we go and drop off the twins. And things like that is what I was trying to kind of work out in my head. And so these have been great. I won't do too much of a detail of this in this video because I will be planning on doing a scheduling video here shortly. I think I'll wait until after the school year has started just so that I can get kind of those initial kinks out of the way and get you more of the realistic what's actually working schedule. Anyway, the other part of this that I really like is this list of curriculum. And so this is just my son's. So his math, his logic, language arts, it's all listed here, which programs he is specifically using, as well as a note to see the family subjects page. But what I like about this is I plan on copying this page to put in his portfolio because it lists exactly what curriculum he's using. It lists his schedule. And then I won't be copying this right away, but I will eventually once I check it off. So to transition to kind of these pages, these are set up on a per subject basis. And I really like this because they're set up week one to 36. And granted, I don't feel like I have to follow this precisely. I can move things around. I wrote this all in friction pens, which are the erasable pens. And so on this page, this is used for me to organize my thoughts as to when we're going to get to different parts of the curriculum. And in this case, it's the Singapore math. I was going to say we're a little bit behind, but that's not really it. This past spring, we stopped to do addition facts that stick and subtraction facts that stick, which is great. And I think it really helped. And so what I'm doing here is I've kind of adjusted things to speed up in different areas that I know that he probably will be able to go fast because we did that extra work. And so that's really helpful for me is I can do that. I can think about that ahead of time and kind of look at exactly the scope and sequence and see how we can finish out here. Now, I'm not holding myself to this really tightly, but that's the current plan. And then my, my thoughts are I'll probably just mark it off as I go, even if we get to like week 30 and we're still back on week 25 work, that's okay. I'm okay with that. I just really wanted a game plan, if that makes sense. And then you can see here, like, this one's much simpler. It says language arts for sunlight. We're just going to do week one on week one, week 23 on week 23. Super simple. Here's all about reading level two. I already know the pace he goes. Usually does about two lessons a week. So I was able to map that out and then I'll decide if I want to pick up level three or not. Haven't decided yet. And then here for like, Spelling, this is different because it's set up in a way of like steps, I believe. So it's like once it gets past a certain step, like you have to master a step before you can go on. So you might spend a ton of time on step 13 and then whiz through step 14. So I'm just planning to do about 10 minutes per day. So that's how I'm, I'm setting this up. And then I did that for my daughter. Same thing, I set up her tentative schedule. Here's her list of curriculum. I'll copy this for the portfolio. And then here's my plan for her math sunlight, language arts K, and one, she probably tested more into language arts one, but I wanted to get a couple of the concepts from K, so we're going a little speedy through that. I'll pick and choose what I want. So this helps me because I've never been a person who is really like, okay, I must do exactly what they say for week one. I'm going to pick and choose what I want anyway. And so in this sense, I've, I've set myself up to do that a little bit better. And so this just helps me deal with the fact that that's how I usually operate. Okay, so that was my daughter and then my twins. Okay, so if you watched my preschool video, for what I'm planning on for them, I'm really excited about, it's basically a Becca K3 as well as Sunlight Preschool 3-4. But like I was saying in that video, I am basing things off of Sunlight. So like for instance, Sunlight has week one, you study the letter C and the number one. And so I'm doing that for Rebecca. So I'm calling, pulling out the Alphabet Friends card C and the development cards 14, 15, 16, and 17. So I'm doing these all in different orders based on how Sunlight teaches it. So that was just so helpful for me to be able to organize my brain. And to take it a step further, the Sunlight has amazing read-alouds. Some of that is fairy tales. And so I wrote down the fairy tales that Sunlight has planned. 
but I also have these gentle and classical preschool storyboards still from a previous year that I loved the storyboards and I want to bring those into the week so that the kids are already reading those fairy tales like for instance Goldilocks is week 28 but I want that for all four kids so not to complicate things but I'm moving then to our family subjects and our fairy tales are in our enrichment loop and so I wrote those down here let me just skip for a second to our enrichment loop, so see Goldilocks in week 28. So I'm going to read that to all of my kids, and I, now I made a note that there's a storyboard associated with it. So the twins are already reading Goldilocks this week. Now we're going to read it also on Enrichment Friday, and we're going to pull out the storyboard. So it just helps me organize all these connections I was planning on making, and I'm really excited about that. I like that idea, and I like the idea where I can plan out when I want to get artistic pursuits done because that's something I'm really excited about. The kids really like it, and I'm thinking we can easily do that on the Friday mornings before I drop off the kids at their enrichment school. So I'm in such a better state at the beginning of the year because I feel like I've got it mapped out. Whether we follow this exactly is not the point. It is already on paper and out of my brain, if that makes sense to anybody. But anyway, so that's the planning section here. I think it pretty much that's all you do here. There's some maybe the future planning ideas, but I'll show you where I plan on doing more of that in a bit. And then you go into the months. So like for instance, July 2021. It has this page here. I plan on using this for a reading list. None of my kids are independent readers, but I think my son might start to be that and I'd like to make a list of those. I'd also like to write down the audiobooks they listen to because if you watched one of my last videos, I talked about our favorite read alouds as well as favorite audiobooks because my kids have just been listening to tons of audiobooks. So I want a place to write that down so that I can take a copy of it and put it in our portfolio so that I can remember what they listen to because it's easy to forget. And so then you go into the calendar. These calendars I plan on just using for homeschool. I have a whole other planner for my life, for my groceries, for meal planning, all this stuff. But this is just for homeschool so I, I can make note of nature days, first day of school. And then it goes into these planning pages and these are great. This is actually a very similar setup to what I was using in my plum paper planner that I used last year. And so I like that. I like that I can kind of use what was already working, how my brain works. And so, for instance, I'm not starting school till the 27th. So the week before I was, I was trying to plan how I would use this page. And I think I got it worked out is, is like I have the subjects down the side, so like math and language arts. And I did this last year too, is I, so I used different colors for my son and my daughter. Son, daughter, sort of idea, their independent work, all their family stuff is in black. And then preschool, my twins. And then I might make enrichment loop kind of notes over here, or on Friday, I guess I could probably do it. So that will get everything on here. I'm gonna show you in a second in our sunlight binder, all the specific assignments there, but I'm not gonna pull them into here because it's just too much. So I'll show you, but I might make notes of unique themes or specific things I need to get. And so this is the weekly setup. I think this will be great. You mark it off when they get it done. Awesome. So it goes through all the different months. At the back, there's more good stuff. So this is student records. I loved this as well. So this is attendance records. One page that I can copy for portfolios for next year. So Cedar, Paige, so my son and daughter, and I'll just X off the days or circle the days, probably circle the days they do school, X off the days if they're sick and things like that. Then be able to tally it all and make sure that we have all the days we need for our state in case they need my records. And you have that for all six kiddos. And then there's some other things back here. So they have a curriculum tracker. My plan for this is to mark down any curriculum that I hear of because I like watching YouTube curriculum videos. I enjoy seeing what other moms are using and what they're excited about. And it can sometimes derail me and I'll be like, oh, that's great, I should look that up. But what I'm trying to do, what I tried to do a little bit last year is I'm just gonna write it down. I'm gonna write down ones that I'm interested in and then I can look into it later and that way I can kind of just stay on track for what I'm using. So anyway, that's the last part of here. There's a couple other things back here. Extracurricular activities, notes and things. We might be doing some soccer, so that's exciting. But anyway, that is A Simple Plan by Mardell. Love it. I'm so excited to use it. I feel like it works just like my brain works. And so I'm excited to see if it actually does. 
Now to transition into my Sunlight Working Binder is probably the best name for it. It's where all of my Sunlight Instructor's Guides are, but only the first six weeks. Like I said, I work in six week chunks, and so it worked really well to just pull out six weeks from all of the different subjects and put them in this binder. And I picked one of these flexible ones, so like when we're reading on the couch for week five of history, I can just flip it behind and we can use it more like a notebook. It doesn't have to be this big binder. So I bought that because I thought that would work really well. So I have five tabs for all the different curriculum we're using. We're using HBL K, so that's History Bible Literature, for my two big kids. And then we're also using the science, which hasn't come, which is what's going to hold this. It doesn't come till August 1st, which will already start school, but I'll just adjust. So that's where science is going to go in here. And then language arts for my son. And I actually bought this used. Somebody else had marked on it. And then language arts K, that's for my daughter. And then the preschool. So what I have done that I think will work really well for my planning is I have photocopied each of these first pages. The grids for each week. And this is what I'm going to mark up. So whenever we finish an assignment, I'll just put a check mark or something next to it or I'll make a note if we don't do it, and then I'll put the dates that that happens, and I'm gonna pull these out and put these in our portfolios for showing that we did this work, if that makes sense, and that will keep the original looking nice, and I'll use this for um, my twins coming up, or say sunlight doesn't work, then that way I can just sell it, and it hasn't been written on, which would be nice. Then it has all the discussion points and things in the instructor guides that I need to know, and so that's really great, and I'm excited about that. And it's the same for language arts, and then all the activity sheets for language arts and science. I have in a different binder that's going to go in kind of a one inch binder for my kids for all their assignments for the week because I'm planning on having that hold their chores as well as their specific schedules that they can mark off for themselves this year. So we're going to try that, so I'll probably make a video about that here, which I can do more of a flip through of some of these instructor guides if anybody's interested. But otherwise, I just kind of wanted to show you that that's what's going to be in this binder. And like I was saying, I'm not going to be writing down all these different things in my Mardell planner. That's just too much. But I'll write down certain things. Oh, like here, it says roll snakes from Plato. So I'll make sure that I have Plato pulled for this week or for that Friday when I'm working with the twins on kind of their practical life skills. So I'll probably make notes of stuff like that in my big planner, but not the whole, like, we're going to be reading pages 18 to 19, if that makes sense. So this will probably live in the basket with all our books, which I almost called our morning time basket, but it's not really our morning time basket. It's like all day, whenever we get to all the different things we need to get to sort of basket. So if anybody has any questions for more in depth on these two things, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to flip the camera around and end the video. Okay guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope seeing all the different spreads and planner sections could help you envision how you might be able to use that planner in particular, or maybe just kind of what you need to think about for writing down for yourself, for your kids, for your curriculum. And it might just be a totally different planner and you actually might think a completely different way than me. But if you happen to think like I do, I am really excited to utilize this planner. It's quite simple. I'm not adjusting a ton and I'm just really utilizing what it has and what it has is exactly what I needed. And so I'm pretty excited. Maybe I will give you kind of a mid-year or end of the year update as to how well it ended up working. But I think the combo of especially that Mardell planner and just my sunlight working finder, I think it will help me just really stay on task and organized and to be able to also pull out what I need for end of the year portfolio kind of collection things. So anyway, that's what I have for this video. I would love to know, are you a planner person? Do you love homeschool planning? How do you do it? I feel like there's so many ways from super simple to more complex and I would love to hear from you. Anyway, that's what I have for this video and I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you for the next homeschool video. Okay, take care. Bye.